There are top of trick tools. So here we go with sharp edges or hard edges as they are normally called. So if I press on any edge, it will turn red, indicating that it is now a hard edge with split normals. If I click shift, it will turn the whole edge loop to, into a hardened edge. And if I press control shift, it will undo it. If I press control and click, it will also undo the hardened edge and essentially soften it. Then there is a brush tool, the brush, it's really dependable on your brush size. So if you just click and drag, it will drag the vertices around. If I make this, uh, press the brackets and make it bigger, you know, press shift, it will soften it out and it will kind of relax the whole mesh around. You can see at the top, it says keep bounce while smoothing. If I turn it off, I can also just push it outside and do this more kind of destructive uh, move movements. Uh, delete polygons is an easy one. You just press and click on any one of those and you delete the polygons. If you press control, you will delete everything. Delete edges is the same thing. If I press on any of the edges, we get deleted. If I press control, it will delete the whole edge loop. At the top, you can click on the edge rings and it will start to delete the edge rings or well, edge loops. So you want to pick one or the other. A collapse tool is an interesting one because if you do just one by one, it's not that useful. However, you can press control and delete the whole edge loop and kind of collapse the whole stack if you need to. Split rings just splits the rings and I don't really need to use it because you, if you pick any other tool like, like points or polygons, if I press control, I can already split the rings already. So there's no need, it's like a redundant button there. Uh, same goes with the move tool. Move is a bit kind of more precise than the brush move, but again, uh, you might as well just use brush tool to move stuff around. Slide edges, you can slide edge one by one, or if you press control, you can slide it up and down the whole edge loop. Then we have measurement. And measurement is a bit funny because I can just click on any of those units and it will change it from meters to millimeters, to centimeters or kilometers. And honestly, I don't really know what it is measuring because then I don't really know the scale of this object at all. But if maybe it can be useful, maybe it can be useful in your production. So there's a whole bunch of particular options here that you can play around with.